So I'll stand for just a minute, please. How about y'all take a second and uh, welcome our visitors, those of you that are close to them. Give me just a minute to get set up. Y'all uh, y'all see some visitors, y'all make them feel welcome tonight, okay? Give me just a second. Hey, make sure these mics are all back here, if you don't mind. Make sure these are all. Y'all feel awful? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we put it all the way up here to the front? Just enough room. All right. All right, stop. Oh, I don't care. They can move. I right, put that down for me. Put the wheels down. Hey, cut this back off a minute. Cut this. You can be, uh, you can turn this back on, Brother Don. Thank you very much. All right, the book of Revelation tonight. The book of Revelation. <clears throat> Revelation chapter number one. Now, one of the, the dangers for me is always getting in a hurry and I forget something. So I'm going to do my best not to uh, get in a hurry. And uh, first of all, I want to say this. I want to tell you all thank you for praying for us this week. Uh, no, so those of you that are new may not know, but uh, Caleb and Jasmine, uh, we started a church in Trinidad 10 years ago. Uh, we took our survey trip 12 years ago, and uh, this week was a 10-year anniversary. And, uh, and uh, the most uh, of all the years of going there, this is the most encouragement I have ever gotten in 12 years. They have five new families. And uh, he texted me this afternoon and said they had nine visitors this morning. And I'm just telling you, man, the Lord is doing something. And some of you know. And, and the reason I am said that is I want to tell you thank you for the support you guys have been financially. Um, those of you that have been around here a while, you, uh, you've uh, met Caleb and Jasmine. Y'all have helped financially. Of course, you helped prayerfully, and I really appreciate it. Those of you that have been involved in any kind of church work at all, you realize how difficult it is to start a church in this day and time. I mean, 20 years ago, things were still a little hot. Everybody agree to that? Uh, things are dying all over this uh, country. Uh, every time we meet now a church planner in every state, in every city, there's usually four or five churches that don't even have a pastor. And, uh, and it's hard for me because you want to go to every one of them. And you want to figure out some way of helping, but that's why God's got these men called, and and uh, and I'm just I'm just very thankful for you, and uh, and uh, and brother Eric, I don't know where you're at. I'm really nervous. I'm having a hard time focusing. Y'all don't need to rush the service, uh, just to get to this because the singing was fantastic, and the kids this evening, y'all y'all please don't ever give up. I mean that's so good. It's so clean. And, uh, and I'm just very appreciative at the good spirit. Thank you for the adults, for working with the kids. Uh, those of us who were not raised in church, it would have been nice to start like that. Anyway, so I'm, I'm thankful for it. Anyway, the book of Revelation tonight. Now, I'm going to do my best to kind of give you an overview before we get into all the crazy stuff. And I hope that, um, that your desire is not only to, l to learn the Word of God, but it also... My prayer for you is that it would stir something up in you because this day and time, everybody, everybody has all these crazy questions. And, uh, and I personally uh, believe that the book of Revelation is as important as any, as any book in the Bible. Now, if you, if you study behind any kind of crazy or listen to people who don't believe the Bible, you'll find the two greatest attacks on the Bible are the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation. 
Let me say that again. The biggest attacks are on the book of Genesis and on the book of Revelation. I'm going to tell you why that's important. Because it shows you how the devil works in the book of Genesis. And in the book of Revelation, it tells you his end. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, this is not just something good to preach. It's right. Because no other book... Look, I know Jesus said that the hell was prepared for the devil's angels, but until you get to the end, you don't see him there. Y'all understand how important that is? Jesus talked about you going to heaven and being with him, right? John chapter 14. But you don't see you there until you get to Revelation chapter 5. All right, now, so here's what we want to do tonight. So if you're taking notes, so we're going to start with the background of the book of Revelation. Now, our opinion of the book of Revelation is, and I, when I tell you, I, uh, not being raised in church, so we spent a lot of years studying, and that doesn't mean anything unless you believe it. But we understand, our, our understanding of the book of Revelation is that John the Apostle, uh, Peter, James, and John, the one that wrote the Gospel of John, is the one that wrote the book of Revelation. And it's very clear to, uh, to show that. Look down in verse number 9 of chapter number 1. He said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I think the Lord's got Peter, James, and John, their books in the back of the Bible, to show you they go together. Okay. Maybe you'll get that later. Now, our persuasion is this, is that the book of Revelation was written after the destruction of Jerusalem, not before. And the reason that I think that's important is because when you get to Revelation 11, he tells you to measure the temple where there is no temple right now. And we'll talk about more details about that. So we believe the book of uh, Revelation is written toward the latter part of the first century in the reign of, not of Nero, but under, uh, I think the way you pronounce it is Domitian. Or Dom, Dom, uh, anyway, I'm bad with names. D-O-M-I-T-I-N. Is that how you say it, Brother Bailey? Is that how you say his name? Domitian? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so now, in, in the book of Revelation, I want to start by saying this, is that we, would, we don't need to neglect the, the importance of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in chapter uh, 1, verse number 1, the Bible says this, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servant servants the things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. Now, as we study this book, we're gonna we're gonna talk about obviously some crazy things, but we do not need to uh, to look past the person of Jesus Christ. Now, look down in verse number five, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And the only reason that we are still in this is because of what Jesus Christ did for us. Amen? Now a lot of people, it's crazy in this day and time, a lot of people want to know about the the last days, but they're not interested in the one who is the ancient of days. And uh, I think that we need to make sure that we emphasize the Lord Jesus Christ as we're teaching through this. Now look at Revelation chapter 5. Look at Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 5, please. Revelation chapter number 5 and verse number 5. Now one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. Who is this? In verse number uh, 8, he says, And he, when he had taken the book and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And whether you realize it or not, this group of people in Revelation chapter number 5 is you if you're saved. Amen. So when we talk about heaven in the Old Testament and heaven in the New Testament, Revelation 4 and 5 gives us, if you will, that window into that third heaven. Now, as we, I got this uh, chart up here just to kind of let you know where we're going to, the direction we're going to go. And as we understand, we are, we are, we are premillennial. We are pre-trib. 
And we'll explain all that as we go. And I know some of these guys today, when people don't believe the Bible, I don't listen to them anyway. And it's one thing if you're having trouble understanding something, but if you don't believe it, God's not going to give you any understanding. And I don't need to hear all that stuff. So this is, so when you go through Revelation chapter number 1, he talks about the things which are, and then he talks about the things which shall be, and obviously these are the things that were, okay? Everybody follow. So this is the present age, and the reason I have it drawn like this is because the church age, or we call now, is not in the Old Testament, only by type. And so when the prophets looked, they saw this, they saw this, they saw the Antichrist, they saw his return, they saw the judgment of nations, they saw the white throne judgment, but they did not see this age which we live right now. It's called a mystery. That's why I have it drawn so Psalm 22, Psalm 23, and Psalm chapter 24. Those are put in order just like that. All right? Now, look back in Revelation chapter number 1. Revelation chapter number 1. I'll go back through this in just a minute. Now, as we go through this book, I, th- I want you to understand is I think that the way the Lord, uh, obviously I think the end is very important, and uh, I'm glad it ends right. Ain't you glad? Can you imagine these? Uh, when you talk to a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon, uh, I always end my conversation with this, that if you're right, I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> I've lived a good life, amen, and when I die, we're okay. But if I'm right, you're in big trouble. Now in Revelation chapter number 1, we'll come back to this next week, Lord willing, but look down in verse number 17. He said, when I saw him... I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Who's talking? Jesus Christ is talking. You say, what is he doing? This is the glorified Son of Man. Verse 18, I am he that liveth, and watch this, and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Then he, he's so excited, he amens himself. And had the keys of hell and of death. And, I, and like I said to you before, many times when I came here before, if you're going to jump your car off with uh, uh, your battery's dead, you're going to need something alive that's going to jump your battery off. And uh, if you want your life to be saved, you need somebody that's alive to jump your dead life off. Amen. Now, as we go through this, this, uh, this present age that we talked about, we'll mention it just in a minute, this is the time called the tribulation. I'll give you the verse in a minute. Great tribulation, the latter half. This throne is the judgment of nations in Matthew 25. This is the 1,000 year reign in Revelation chapter number 20. And this is the white throne judgment, the end of uh, Revelation chapter number 20. Now, what I want to do is I want to work through this, basically, and then I'll give you another overview and then we'll finish up. Now, look at Revelation chapter number 2 and verse number 1. He said, Under the church of the, uh, the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things he, saith he that sowed the seven stars in his right hand. Y'all please pray for me. I'm very nervous. Walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, look back at chapter number 1 and verse number 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest Watch this now, are these seven churches. Now, when we start this book of Revelation, the Lord works into chapter 2 and 3 with these these letters to the churches. Now, these churches historically were in Asia. But they also represent the time that we live in to the rapture of the church in Revelation chapter number 4. Because this first church is Ephesus. And the last church is Laodicea. Now I want you to look in chapter number 3 at what the Lord says about this church. This will give you an idea that we're in the right place. Now I don't know if y'all know this or not. Surely you got enough sense to know that things start off good and then they go down. Anybody who believes in evolution is probably smoking the banana peels they think they came from. Because things don't start off in a puddle of paradise and work your way up here. Things started off right with God, perfect and no sin, and now we're down in the dumps again. It does, anybody who realizes, and here's what I'm saying, is that a church like this is doing well, we need to make sure we maintain it so we're not part of another statistic that 10 years down the road, people talk about how great that Victory Baptist Church was and not is. 
So degeneration is common. Look at Revelation chapter number 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. We know who that is in chapter 1. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and we have buildings, and we have buses, and we have padded... Come on, talk to me. See, why is it that we're more... I'm I'm just going to try to be careful here. We're in a generation of now where preachers talk about how nice their buildings are and and they dress all these fancy dressing and they're more concerned about the outside and the things that you have. And do you understand, we don't need a building to have church. You're the church. Anyway, I'm going to try to leave that alone. All these knuckleheads around here... That when you go to their church, you've got to be rebaptized. And never mind. I need, I need to stop. I need to stop. Anyway, verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now, the condition that we in, anybody ought to see, is that we went from loving the Lord with all our heart, and now the Lord is in the middle of the churches, and now He's standing on the outside of the door trying to get back in. Don't tell me we're doing better. Come on, talk to me. Don't tell me we're doing better. As a, as a whole, we're not doing better, we're doing worse. We're not reaching as many people. And so, how do you know all Look, because where we are now precedes where we're fishing to go. <laughs> look at chapter number 4 and verse number 1. And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come on up here. That's the hillbilly version. Amen. And I will show these things which must be hereafter. And watch this. And immediately in the twinkling of an eye, I was in the Spirit. Amen. Now whether you realize it or not that the churches are mentioned up to this point and they disappear through the rest of the book of Revelation. So that shows you that we are here right at the very end waiting for someone to step out and say, Come on up here. Now, if you're sitting in this building tonight and you ain't ready, you better make sure you're ready. Because the Lord ain't going ain't gonna to have some crazy voice out there and some thunderstorm come through and, uh, and try to wake you up. You better make sure you go to bed ready just in case He comes while you're sleeping. All right, and look at Revelation chapter number 19. Revelation chapter number 19. Real quick like, Revelation chapter number 19. And we'll kind of do a little uh, overview of those churches as we come through. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't want to be part of a dead church. I hope you don't either. Revelation chapter number 19. I don't want to have the right Bible and the right building and the right clothes and then just be dead as a hammer. The emphasis is in the wrong place, I'm just telling you. Revelation chapter number 19. I wonder what kind of uh, shirt and tie the Lord wore. I mean, why do you talk about it when you preach? Anyway, Revelation 19, <clears throat> verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. <laughs> and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, as though the battle is already won. Amen. And His name is called the Word of God. Notice the capital W. And the armies which were in heaven followed Him upon white horses clothed in fine linen and clean. So when we read the book of Revelation, we find a door opens here and someone goes up. We read in Revelation 19 and the door opens again and somebody comes down. Now, i got these microphone stands up here to help illustrate what I'm saying. This is the rapture. This is His return. And then this is the white throne judgment out here. And notice there's a space between them, and the spaces are different. Because between the rapture and His return, there's seven years. And, and the time between 
His return in the white throne judgment is a thousand years. Now, the only, the only old time preacher that I, I mean, you, you can't, I mean, the, the impact that some of these guys got, and I tell you what, it just slipped my mind what that preacher was from Carterville, Georgia. Sam Jones, is that right? Now, Brother Sam preached against everything, and he influenced that whole area work, but what he did was, is that he had the, he had the judgment, he had the white throne judgment out here, he had the judgment of nations here, and he had the judgment seat of Christ up here where we're going to do when we go, when we're taken out. He had all three of them together. And I want you to understand that the judgment seat of Christ and the judgment of nations and the white throne judgment are not the same. And that's why I set this up here so you could see the rapture and then the tribulation and then His return and then the white throne judgment. There are spaces between. Now, go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I like what the old timers say. say, nothing like a Bible to clear up a college education. Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter 24. Now when I get done with this, Lord willing, I'll go back and give you a PowerPoint of how things... Uh, man, to think how crazy things are and how far we come. Did you ever think it would be this bad this soon? Did you really? Uh, honest to God, I never thought it. I mean, and that's why I wonder, and I could be wrong about this, I wonder if guys who preached it in the past really believed what they were saying. So you got guys 25 years ago after I got saved said it's going to get bad, 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 and then when it gets bad, they're out, jump ship. Well, either did you believe what you were saying? That, that don't even make sense to me. Is it going to get worse? It's going to get worse. But we don't want the worst to affect us in here. Now look at Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24, Jesus is talking. My words are not in red, so that's why I emphasize that. Notice verse 29. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the what? Say it. So who called it the tribulation? Jesus did. Everybody follow? Notice verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. He's not talking about in this world ye shall have tribulation. He's talking about a time that is called the tribulation. And he said, I'm going to return after the tribulation. Now, maybe you've not been taught enough about the Bible. The difference between the rapture and his return is very simple. This is where he comes for his saints. This is where he comes with his saints. This is where he comes in the air, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, and this thing he comes to the ground. And he stands on a stands on Mount of Olives. So in, in Acts chapter number 1, Jesus, he walked over the Mount of Olives on the Bethany side, and he let, raises his hands to bless them, and up he goes in a cloud, and they're standing there probably with their tongue sticking out. And he said, this same Jesus, this same Jesus shall... Come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. The clouds took him away. The clouds are going to bring him back. And he's going to stand in that very spot that he left from. Amen. Amen. All right, go to Revelation chapter number six. Revelation chapter number six. Revelation chapter number six. The book of Revelation does not record the past, it reveals the future. Now look at Revelation chapter number 6, and we'll just basically just go over this thing about the tribulation just for a little bit. And uh, now you have guys, you have guys, and I'm going I'm to slow down a little bit, see if I can get some of this stuff in here. Y'all forgive me. I don't know why I'm so nervous. Y'all forgive me. I, I normally, and don't please don't be upset, I normally don't listen to women teach as far as when it comes to prophecy. I think they got their head in the sand. Uh, but I, I just happened, a lady was talking about the rapture one day, so I just happened to turn it on. I don't watch it much. And so she had, because of all the COVID craziness, she had the Lord coming back at a certain time in, uh, um, in uh, 20, 2020. And she said, here's what she said. She goes, if the rapture doesn't happen in 2020, she goes, I have no other options. That was her last video. 
Now look, listen to me closely. You don't know when He's coming. That's why you're supposed to be ready at any time. Now as we look at the big picture, anybody who has kids understands, now listen closely, when a woman, that's why the Lord likens this thing to a woman giving birth, anybody can tell when it gets close. But you don't know the day or the hour. The doctor's just telling you that based on when he thought it was conceived. <laughs> but any fool can tell when it gets close. Get in a car with them. You'll understand how close it is. Stop. Drive fast. Stop. Too fast. Too slow. I mean, it's all. <laughs> get up in the middle of the night and go somewhere and get by food. I mean, you, you realize the closer it gets, the contractions get shorter and closer and more intense. I'll tell you what you do. If you think I'm exaggerating, here's what America does. America has to cover some of the news that's affected with this, and then they dismiss it right away. Because in other countries, they're having major weather problems that only add. You say, why? As we closer we get, the intensity gets worse, and your country's next. Someone says, well, can God bless America? Well, can God bless America, the what, what we're allowing? Now, we don't have no control over the world, but now the churches are debating oh, whether it's okay to have a homosexual pastor or not. Don't try up on me. Amen. You know it's not right. Well, the ones that already ordained women to pastor are now ordaining. <laughs> I'm really trying to be careful. I'm just telling you, you're so close, I would make sure that I was ready before I went to bed, not just in case it's not close. All right, Revelation chapter number 6. Man, I'm ready to go, ain't you? I'll tell you what's interesting. You ought to ask your teenagers about if they're ready to go or not. They're saved, but Dad, I'd like to get married. I understand all that. I understand all that. I'd like to have kids someday. I understand all that. But I promise you, the, the junk you're going to have to deal with, you'd rather be at the house. Amen. Some of these old dear saints, man, that... Uh, those of you who don't know, when I left, I had to fly to Georgia for a funeral and then fly to Colorado for the meeting. You say, well, why did you fly to Georgia? Because it was a good friend of ours that had died of cancer. And I had, the last time we were in Georgia, me and Shelly and Jeremiah went by and saw him. And as he's sitting in that chair and I look in those eyes, I'm like, boy, it won't be long. Do you understand? If I was dying and you're praying to heal me, I hope you're talking about on the other side. Anyway, Revelation chapter number 6. Uh, this thing's going to get bad for it. Oh, I just hope that they don't try to come in here. You understand? Uh, I don't need to. Anyway, I'm going to do it anyway. You understand when they, when they did this thing about COVID, it was all planned. All planned. It was planned. Let's get rid of the old people because they don't offer anything in society. And y'all, that'll be enough to make some of you mad. They figured out how much money they were going to make on suckers over toilet paper. Let's just see how stupid these Americans are. And, and as you go to the grocery store, you see, I mean, I saw it with my own eyes. Two grocery buggies full of toilet paper and no food. If you don't eat food, you don't need the toilet paper. It just shows you how stupid America is. But you know what one of the other goals was? Let's get rid of the churches. And they realized that these churches that were full of older people, they realized they would never come back to church. It was planned, people. And listen to me, you're next. You and I are the last hope for this country. You are the salt and you are the light, so you get rid of the light. And you throw the salt out in the ground and you trodden it underfoot. You say, why? Because that's the only thing this country has left. Anyway, Revelation chapter number 6. I'm not giving up without a fight. I'm just here to tell you. I just ain't doing it. Revelation chapter number 6. In verse number 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, 
Hold your place there and go to Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19. Right back where we were started at a while ago. Some of these guys have uh, stopped looking for the Lord. They somehow think we're right in the middle of the tribulation now. Uh, trust me, you are not in the middle of it right now. I'm going to tell you how I explain it. See if this will make sense to you. If you've ever been down to the ocean, or you maybe you call it the coast. I don't know what you call it because you're afraid somebody think you're on the beach. I don't know. So if you've ever been down there and there's a storm been brewing across the ocean, it doesn't matter how far it is, the closer it gets to you, you begin to, you begin to feel the wind, you even start feeling a little bit of rain. Now the storm is coming, but you're just feeling the effects of it. What I'm saying is right now you're beginning to feel the effects of it. It's not here yet. You say, why? Because at the end of this church thing right here, out you go, out you go, out you go, out you go, out you go. This is before the tribulation, thank God. If you want to stay, help yourself. I'm going out in the first load, amen? Amen. Revelation chapter number 19. I like the old timers would say, we're going to leave this world like Superman. Come back like the Long Ranger, amen? Amen. Revelation chapter number 19, verse number 11 again, watch. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Now, just for time's sake tonight, at the beginning of the tribulation, this man comes out, Pete comes out, anyway, I'm not going to get into all the details tonight. Notice that this guy is on a white horse, and Jesus Christ is on a white horse, and most of these guys teach that this white horse rider is Jesus Christ, This white horse rider is the Antichrist. Now when I get to this chapter, I'm going to talk about how he is an imitation of a real thing. But they're not the same. Now, one more time. This is the present age which we are. The rapture is next. I hope you're ready. The tribulation follows. The Lord returns. He comes before the 1,000 years, not after the 1,000 years. He comes before the 1,000 years, not after. Come on, talk to me. The Lord's not going to look down and go, man, they're doing such a great job. I'm just going to come down. That's not the way it's working. Now, go back to Revelation chapter number 20. Let me show it to you again. Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation chapter number 20, notice in verse number 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into a bottomless pit. Look at these three words, and shut him up. Well, you can't shut him up now, but he'll be shut up later. Verse 3, till the thousand years shall be fulfilled. Verse 4 at the end, lived and reigned with Christ. How long, say it? Verse number 5, And the rest of the dead lived not again till the thousand years were finished. Verse 6 at the end, And shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And we'll talk about going to deceive the nations no more. So, in Revelation chapter number 19, before we come back, there's a marriage supper of the Lamb. This is what I call the honeymoon. We come back with Him and, and live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Now, go back to Revelation chapter number 1. Let me show you something. I want to add this in there while I'm here. Revelation chapter number 1. Revelation chapter number 1. Now, all the extra details we'll cover as we go through it. I'm just trying to give you just a little bit of an overview, overview to show you how things work and what's going on. Honest to God, people, I believe it's so close it could be tonight. Now, if some of you believed it, you would live different. See, our our behavior should match our beliefs. Some profess to know God, but in works they deny Him being abominable. I promise you, when you ask, I'll tell you what you do. Next time you witness, and and, uh, have you ever got mad when God puts a Christian in your life, in your witness? You got, well, what? I'm trying to win people to Christ and the Lord puts a Christian in front of you. It's because they need encouragement. You need encouragement. And why don't you ask them this? Ask them, are they ready for the Lord to come? So if the Lord were to come tonight, your house clean? 
Would you have to go home and throw some stuff out? How about those movies? All the stuff on your phone? Or some of the stuff you're hiding? How about your heart? Have aught against any of the brethren? Any bitterness, wrath, anger? Anything going on between you and someone else? that you would have to deal with as soon as the Lord. Why would you go to bed with a bad conscience when you go to bed with a good conscience? Here's what some people do. They get right with the Lord, but they forgot you've got to get right with the brethren. That's why you don't have no peace. You can't just say, oh, God, forgive me. If you've wronged someone else, you have offed against the other, your brother, go to your brother and make it right so you can sleep. Not Revelation chapter number 1. Look down in verse number 6. Revelation chapter number 1, verse number 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see Him. And they also which pierced Him, and all the kings of the earth shall wail because of Him. Even so, Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter number 5. One more time. Revelation chapter number 5. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 5. Look down in verse number 10. These guys were singing, and here's what they said. They're in heaven, and hath made us unto our God kings, and what? Say it. And we shall reign where? Say it. Now look, they're in heaven. When they're singing this, they're in heaven to be Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. They are in heaven. Now they're singing a song, but Thou hast made us kings and priests, and we shall reign on this earth. Now look, let me, let, me just, let me just throw this out. I've been saved almost 30 years. And in my young Christian life, going from a charismatic, Pentecostal, tongue-speaking, and all this craziness, to a Southern Baptist church who loved the Lord, you know what I have never heard in very little teaching in 30 years is that the life you live now is going to reflect over there. You know, you know what most people think? Well, we're just going to go to heaven. We're going to live in a cabin. You have no idea what you're talking about. And you might ought to get a little bit of in you because, look, you and I are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ personally and we're going to have to give an account of the things that we've done since we've been saved. Thank God not before we were saved. Thank God all that trash has been taken to the dump. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. If the Lord were to take you and I out here now and we go before the judgment seat of Christ, where would you be here? Paul abased himself and he said, well, i tell you what, you guys reign now, I'm going to suffer now because if you reign now, you're going to suffer a loss later. Amen. All these people are building up all this treasure now. Well, what are you going to do in the millennium when the Lord's having you ride around on the back of a garbage truck picking up trash? Look, it is not just getting saved and going to heaven. Our lives ought to please the Lord that when we, when we see Him, He will be pleased with us and not ashamed of us. Have you ever read the verse about well done? I think it's a little bit more important to be well done than well said. Would you agree? So we're priests and kings on this earth, and we shall reign. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It took me years to even understand this. What if everything we're doing now reflects out here? What if everybody knows how we live now, then? What if the... Okay, I'm going to speculate a little bit. What if the length of your garment... See, remember the Pharisees always trying to lengthen theirs? See, they're covering up a dead heart. A wicked heart. That's why they kept covering up. But what if the length of our garments and how the Lord raises us up, how if that reflects what we've done now? Will it reveal that we're ashamed and that we reign now and we live for ourselves now and then we suffer loss later? 
Do you realize that uh, Bill Clinton professes to be a Christian? You know what Brother Gibbs told us? Brother Gibbs, the uh, Christian law, you know what he told me? He said, he said, Brother Freddie, he said, in the day, listen now, in the day, he said, Bill Clinton's Bible was marked up like yours is. He said, when he went to work for Bill Clinton, and I don't remember how many years ago, because I forgot to ask him, he said, now, David, he said, don't forget to give these men the gospel. That's what Bill Clinton said. It's not hearsay. This is the man telling me when he worked with him. And then he said, well, what changed was when he got a new pastor and his new pastor decided that abortion wasn't murder. And he said, now Hillary was a, another thing altogether. She was like a Jezebel on steroids. Now, Anyway, let's go to Revelation chapter number 20 one more time. Revelation chapter number 20. <clears throat> you say, well, why did you say that? Well, just because you profess it doesn't mean you are one. Now, maybe my burden's wrong. Maybe it's wrong. I'll tell you the difference between, let's see if I can say this the right way. I think the difference between a Maybe a preacher and a teacher is is that I, I have more of a burden for God's people than I do lost people. Maybe that's a fault. Maybe you'll hear a preacher, he'll, he'll preach a gospel every time he, and uh, certainly there's nothing wrong with that. People got to be saved, don't they? But I have a burden for God's people to grow and to know what God wants them to do so when they see the Lord, they're not ashamed. You are my crown and my joy or not even you my, my rejoicing, what? At His coming. I have a more of a burden for that. All right. Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 7. So when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So now we've gone through the, we've gone through the, the, the churches. We've gone through the tribulation from chapter 6 to chapter 19, verse number 10. We've got the judgment of nations in Matthew 25. We'll cover in detail when we get to here. We've got the thousand year reign. After the thousand years are expired, then we got the white throne judgment. I look down in verse number 11. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. That means when God finally opens his presence, it's all got to go. Right now, he has it turned down. You and I can't even stare into the sun in any length of time. There's going to be a day when the Lord takes that veil down and everything's going to have to flee because of His power. Verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. I almost tend to believe the book of the living and the book of Psalms and the book of life probably are two different books. The dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books, according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, the body and the soul. They were judged every man according to the works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, Revelation 21 and 22 obviously deals with eternity, and I'm going to probably want to finish with this. I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to finish with this. One of the things that bothers me about the white throne judgment is some of my family and some of my friends. Now, I don't know if you've come to the grips or not, but people really do go to hell. And I don't like it. I don't even like to talk about it. And I think any preacher that's glad about it when he's preaching, something's wrong with that guy. None of us should be glad that people are going to hell. Look at me on our watch. So is our hands going to be bloody or are they going to be clean? You know why I think the Lord talks about the no more sorrow and the no more pain? You know why He talks about that after what we're reading? It's because when you and I stand there and we watch people we know, we know, be cast into a lake of fire, you cannot live with that for eternity. That's why the Lord is going to remove the very memory of it. We uh, were doing some work in Colorado and uh, me and... Uh, Brother Lucas here, 
we were picking up some material at the, at the wood yard, and there was an older Spanish gentleman there, long beard, very, very pleasant. And Brother James, I said to him, I think his name was Randy. Does that sound right? So when I said, I said to him, Randy, I said, uh, you know the Lord personally? He said, no, I don't. Just like that. And I went, today may be the day. <laughs> it's been a while, man. I'm a terrible fisherman. Terrible. I'm just having a hard time getting them in a the boat. That's why I'm trying to drop more hooks. Anyway. So I said, now Randy, I said, so what are you waiting on? He goes, well, and he went through these little things. And I told him, I said, now look, the Lord may come. You need to make sure you're ready tonight. He goes, well, this is what he said. He goes, well, he goes, well the Lord wouldn't leave me. That's what he said. No lie. And I said to him, I said, look, Jesus said, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And that guy thanked me for that. But wouldn't it be terrible to stand before God and watch that man after all he had heard, all the prayers he had prayed to Mary, all those prayers he had prayed to God, not even know him, and then be cast into hell after doing all that? Here's, here's my problem with our generation and the people of America. When you witness to people, your presentation needs to be clear. It needs to be simple that if anybody hears what you say, they can do it as simple as you're saying it. Here, this was the, the so I, I couldn't get him in the boat. I, I tried. I just couldn't do it. So Tuesday, after Brother Eric got done preaching, they had invited a young man from Wendy's to come to church. He just showed up at the meeting out of nowhere. And then Brother Guy got to talking to him, and Brother Guy said, well, what if you were going to the electric chair and somebody took your place and that kid said, well, I would worship him forever. <laughs> Man, set up like you ain't never seen something. So when, look, this kid is in his early 20s in Colorado had never heard a clear presentation of Jesus Christ and when he heard it, he got saved right there on the spot. Now, here's the discouraging part, and I'll give you the encouraging part. Don't it bother you when you can't win them? One day I'd gotten so discouraged after visitation one day, I said, man, what in the world am I doing? None of this is working. And then the Lord reminded me, he goes, if I couldn't win them all, you can't win them all. But I can still sow, and I can still plant, Amen. and I can still plow, and I can still water. Years ago, we, uh, we'd go to the rescue mission in Atlanta. We always stopped at the same BP station. It had, it had opening doors automatically. You've seen them, these new doors like this. So I'm standing there. A kid walks by me. I give him a try. He comes back out. They say, maybe you ought to talk to him. So I walk over to his car, start witnessing to him, and he goes, man, you're the third person that talked to me today. I was so shocked. I said, Brother Gary, I said, I'd never heard that in 20 years. And man, I started laying in there. I said, you're probably going to die today. You better get right with God. And before I even give the invitation, he bows his head and started praying. I wasn't even done with my lesson. So here, here's what I want to say. Is you may not think you're doing any good. But God takes that little bit that you and I do. And he sends somebody else along the way to water that. So please don't get discouraged. Because sometimes we think we're not doing any good. But I'm going to tell you something. It does some good. And I don't want you to be discouraged. So let me go over this one more time and then we'll be done. This is the present age. These are the letters to the churches. The churches end right here in Revelation 3. Rapture we go up. This is the rapture. There are seven years in between. This is His return to the earth. And from this judgment of nations to the white throne judgment, there's a thousand years and then out into eternity. I tell you what, you ought to sit around and listen to Zach ask you Bible questions. So Zach has asked me questions one day, Brother Bailey, and we get out to Revelation 20, and then he starts asking me questions about Revelation 21 and 22. I went, I don't have a clue. So why don't you have a clue? I don't have a clue. Don't you understand that the Lord is putting enough in there just to get your taste wet? But how in the world are you going to explain something you've never even seen? 
So let me just put it in a few words. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. Uh, let's all stand tonight. Brother Eric, you come. And I'm going to do this. I, I, some of this stuff I had not planned to say, and I apologize for getting sidetracked. But just in case you're here tonight and you're not saved, I would make sure I'd get saved. Now look at me, saints. Look at me, saints. Please don't be discouraged in witnessing. And don't let people that don't want to hear it discourage you. Somebody wants to hear it. Now, y'all look at me. Look at me. I wasn't saved in church. I got saved on a Wednesday night <laughs> as a personal witness. God ain't just working in here. should be working out there. Here's what I want to get you to do. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I'll just take just a second. I'm not going to drag this out. Now, if you're sitting in here by chance and you're new or you're visiting, please don't leave this room if you're not saved. Please don't leave this room. Now, saints, let's remind ourselves of where we're going, what we're supposed to be doing, so we're not ashamed when the Lord comes. Anybody want to come, Miss Naomi? You can go ahead and begin to play. I'll give you just a minute to pray, and then I'm going to turn this over to Brother Eric. Brother Eric?